Hi, I'm Roisin Murphy and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Roisin Murphy. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Really sure. happy to be here. We're very excited to have you. <laughs> we just heard you sound check, it sounded great, so just thank you very much for taking the time to have a chat. Thank you. So you are now on your first ever North American tour, kicking things off in Toronto tonight. How excited are you for everything that's to come? Super excited. I mean, it has been a long time coming. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice to be touring America, North America. Does it feel a little weird with four solo records under your belt that you haven't had a full North American tour? It is a bit weird. I mean, it's a, it's a hard thing to pull off. I mean, I, I have a big band and a crew and it's very expensive and and I like to do things properly, so it's just took this long for it to be done properly. Was there anything you really want to see or do while over here? Well, I'm a big fan of architecture, and um, today I walked like five miles around town looking at concrete, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some beautiful things. Your library here is stunning. It's really pretty. Oh, my God jaw-droppingly beautiful mm -hmm. and the other building that really stuck with me was the uh, medical science building for the university okay which is really beautiful too poetry actually in concrete I'm so happy you actually <laughs> had the chance to walk around are you gonna try to do that in every city you're in I do I try I okay. try as much as I can and I take photographs of buildings and then I put them all up on um, like I'm a member of the brutalist appreciation society and I'm a member of the postmodern appreciation society and and so on and so I kind of take pictures and I put them up on the wall and then people discuss and yeah it's a hobby <laughs> I'm a nerd like that <laughs> <laughs> well we must discuss take her up to Monto your latest record release most of this material I believe all of this material was written along the same time as your previous record so how did it feel to finally unleash all of this because you were sitting on it for a while well I mean it was yeah I, we we wrote everything in a five week period and then we came back and we finished some tracks for hairless toys and we left the rest unfinished we went off on tour and um, kind of left it for a long time and then came back with fresh ears to the, the second part of the process and uh, made monto so it was fun to kind of get it all out yeah and it does feel like i mean surely this tour is the last major kind of thing connected to this whole era it kind of feels like slightly sad in a sense because really? it is the end of an era yeah is each record release once you're towards the end of it it feels like you're saying goodbye almost it does it's it's kind of exciting because i know i'm making another record and i know that that's exciting but it's also kind of sad to say goodbye to this era a song that I'm really digging from this era is romantic comedy because I just feel like the lyric Cupid is a comedian. That is such a good lyric. So what inspired that track initially? Well, that's the story of my life, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess um, humor is a big thing for me and definitely something that I'm really attracted to. And um, I think it's really close to music humor. It's obviously all about timing and actually anything that's any good is about sort of rhythm, about timing, even as we were talking about architecture, anything beautiful I think has a rhythm to it and um, comedy is no, no different and oftentimes you find that love affairs are just big comedies and, um, and that's what that song's about. Well taken from the record you also directed a video for whatever. I did. So when did you first decide that you wanted to get into directing? When did you feel like it was something you wanted to embark on? I've always wanted to, to be honest. Um, and I've always been massively uh, involved in anything visual to do with the music. Um, and I didn't think I was going to be a musician. I thought I was going to be a visual artist when I was growing up. And then I kind of got a record deal accidentally and that's a whole other story. But yeah I mean I just I, I relish it and I really enjoy making visual work I was always a little scared to sort of start directing and um, on hairless toys I was umming and ahhing about whether I should do it or not and I asked my ex-boyfriend who actually made some videos for me in the past Simon Henwood whether I should do it and he said no and then and then he called me up a couple of hours later and he said no really really you should not do it so that was when I decided I was going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, it's I thought, so good. Okay, I think I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> the videos and the songs, you can tell how much effort, love, passion, they're all so intricate. So with that said, with all the passion and time you put into these things, what do you find is easier, writing a song or directing a full video? Directing is really hard. Uh, it's also really exhilarating because, um, well, not so much on these videos for this album, whatever, and um, 10 Miles High, which were kind of done in guerrilla style, filmed kind of on the street with a very small crew. That was exciting in one way, but the videos that I made for Hairless Toys were with a bigger crew, and it was a one day shoot, and it was a more kind of straightforward way, the way that usually you make videos in a sense. And that is one big team all working together in a day, and it's like a performance, uh, the actual directing itself is like a, t a performance in a way. It's like a an all-day play that's going on. And um, it's extremely exciting to kind of be in charge of all of that. <laughs> and very scary because you have to get it in the can, you know, before the end of the day. Do you still get nervous now that you've done a few? Yeah, because every time, every time you do it, you need to make sure that you're, especially when you're not a video director, and you need to make sure you don't fall flat on your face you have to keep proving that you can do it you know well for whatever especially for you I made a little game called the whatever game so I'm gonna say a word and if you happen to like the context of that word or what it has to do with you say yeah and then if you don't you just say whatever okay all right so well, I'm just gonna name the words off and then you say either yeah or whatever okay all right so the first one puzzles what ifs thunderstorms yeah cooking I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an Italian husband, so he does most of the cooking. Go kart racing. Yeah. Video games. Whatever. Hiking. Yeah. Magic. Whatever. Poker. Whatever. And snow. Yeah. <laughs> I like how excited you got on that one. <laughs> yeah, I love snow. Everybody loves snow. On Instagram, I noticed that you definitely keep up posting a lot of great fashion blogs. You even use the hashtag fashion blog. So for you, what are some of your fashion don'ts or things that you don't think you'll ever venture into? Oh, uh, there isn't any. No? No. No, I keep a very open mind when it comes to dressing myself. No limits. <laughs> Not that there's no limits, but it's just... You never know what's around the corner, you know, and, and every new kind of era or sort of stage that I go through, I don't really know what I'm going to do until I get there. It's all on instinct, so I wouldn't dream of saying that something's out of bounds. I love how you're not just open with your fashion and music, but on your Twitter you share some really great stuff. So I have a couple of tweets or things that you've said that I'd love to hear the story behind. Okay. So the first one is, I'm a weirdo and I'm proud of being a weirdo. So what to you makes you a weirdo? I mean, I guess deciding at, as a teenager that it was okay to be sort of slightly out of the box, you know, was a big thing. And I think it's a big thing for a lot of people who go through that. It really um, gives you a sense of pride in yourself and gives you freedom. And the other one I have, which was just two words, was simply, fuck Starbucks. So what happened there? <laughs> well, I tell you what. Anyway, I'm not too pleased with Star Starbucks. They don't pay uh, the tax um, like other corporations and so on. And I was on the Tube, the, the underground in London last week, and uh, kind of a strange lady got on. And then a young girl got on and she had a, a Starbucks cup in her hand and I took no notice. And then this lady turned around to the girl and she was like, do you know they don't pay any tax? Do you know that you pay their tax? And she sort of, the girl was a bit like, but it was so true what the woman <laughs> was saying. And it's kind of interesting what you can hear on the underground in London. And that was when I came back and really started to think about it. My mother had said it to me as well because I, I come from a small town in Ireland and um, just recently they've moved into that little town and they've mm. actually set up right next door to an Irish, you know, a, okay. a homegrown coffee shop. And my mother was saying to me, you know, they don't pay tax. And, and this woman was saying, it's us that pay their tax. And she also said, women really, everything that we need, we, need, we get it because people pay tax. And it's, it's very important that people understand that people like Starbucks you know, corporations like Starbucks need to start sort of taking responsibility. Um, 
um, and they ha they live in a country that isn't, or they're sort of operating out of a country that isn't in total disarray because we're all paying the tax. I love how so much significance can come out of two simple words. Yes, <laughs> but you know, also, um, you know, they don't pay very good wages. They, the cups themselves are an ecological disaster. It's it's all round not good. <laughs> Let's well, wrap everything up today because you soon have a show to perform. Is there anything you want to say to all of your fans who'll be viewing the interview? Um, I'm just really excited to be here and I hope people can uh, accept that it's our first gig for a while and so we might be a little bit rusty but the heart and soul will be there. Well, I just want to say welcome back and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's my pleasure and remember to everybody viewing you can visit us at amusicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos and so much more with your favorite artists. See you next time.